The amateur game has always been a big part in their lives. It's always the topic of their conversations and is constantly on our minds on a daily basis. Although it's not at a professional level, the amateur game is a working class sport at a working class level. Players put their bodies on the line, life's on hold, and have worked their socks off to be the best they can be from the top to the bottom of the amateur game. We live and breathe football and the amateur game has given us our best years in football. Both of us have come to the end of our playing days and want to sit and speak to the legends of the game, the legends in the world, to sit and listen about the careers and stories of the game we love. Welcome to our podcast. Three points, please. So today um, we have the lads in from the Transplant Irish team. He played out in the AUL complex here against England. Got a good uh, two-all draw, was it? Two-all draw, yeah. Three-all. 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 So, uh, welcome, lads. I'm gonna. John's going to kick us off there. And um, Well, uh, thanks very much for having me on. Um, yeah, listen, the transplant team um, originated about three years ago. It was an idea um, of a few, a few people um, through the IKEA, which is the Irish Kidney Association, who are the governing body for transplant sport in Ireland. Um, and they were looking at the idea of maybe trying to set up a, a soccer team. Um, there was a lot of negativity against it um, because it was seen as a contact sport and transplant patients aren't allowed to compete in, in, transplant, in contact sports. Um, so there was a bit of to and fro for a while, but it, it got off the ground eventually. Um, and uh, obviously then COVID hit. Um, so everything was shut down and we couldn't really do anything uh, for the best part of two years because being transplant patients um, we're immunocompromised uh, so our immune systems are um, a lot weaker than the normal person so we had to be extra careful around COVID and that um, but then COVID came and went and um, we decided that we'd, we'd give it another go to see could we get it off the ground again and uh, I have to say since, since we've come back from COVID it's just gone from strength to strength uh, the numbers in the squad are excellent now. We've ending up to 25 guys uh, training on a, on a regular basis. Um, we've changed our uh, coaches and we've, we've uh, Matt now, you'll probably talk to him in a few minutes. Matt's come in on board. He's now the, the manager of the team. Um, and uh, we train every two weeks down in Kilkenny. And um, yeah, I suppose the big thing for us, we're, we're actually, our main goal is to, is to kind of get ready for the very first World Cup, which is uh, next year, uh, September of next year. And um, today was another one of those kind of steps in the progression to get ourselves there. Um, against, you know, the, against the old rivals. Yeah, 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 yeah. No better opposition to play yeah, against, exactly, I suppose, yeah. you know, to yeah. see where you are, you know. And um, three all, um, I suppose it was a fair enough result. We probably could have nicked it in the end. They, they scored the last kick of the ball to make it three all. Um, but I think overall, when you look back at the day itself, it was probably um, probably a fair enough result. And, and fair play to them for coming over. And yeah, that, very you good. Know, so, um yeah, the next step then, we, we play in two weeks' time and then, um, you know, I think we'll take a bit of a break over the, over the Christmas period and then uh, listening to Matt and talking to Matt, we're, we're going to go full-blooded for it now after Christmas. The one, two weeks is a big one now in Turner's Cross, isn't it? In, in a, yeah, in yeah. the stadium, so yeah, that'd be good for the yeah. Lions there. Well, it'll be our first 11 aside as well. We've Very been playing good. seven aside up until now. Um, obviously, the World Cup next year is 11 side format, so we kind of have to try to get a bit of uh, preparation in for 11 yeah. aside and that, so... That's a, that'll be in two weeks' time. It's on the obviously in Turner's Cross. It'll be the big pitch with big goals and all this kind of stuff. So it'll be another yard. It's big to time. See. Yeah, another yard stick to see where we are in our development. Very but good, um, yeah. no, I have to say, uh, yeah, it's starting to build up nicely. Yeah. Well, going to Matt. So um, you, you've took over as manager. How long are you doing it? Well, yeah, so I've been with the boys the last couple of months now. Uh, I knew about them obviously through. Uh, CK United got involved initially I suppose Shane Dunphy uh, director of football there in CK United uh, the boys are looking for someone to get involved so Shane got in and got himself involved uh, also looking for a hand so I said uh, I would be more than happy to jump in and give the boys a dig out uh, any time they're looking for a coach so I did uh, and then from there it just evolved that I happened to be taking over more of the sessions and more of the sessions and then they asked me what I think of so it usually happens manager. though I'll give a dig out one day and then I'll find out you're, you're on the team like so yeah, same as that. Now, look at again, we were training up in Port Leash and great. We have guys travelling from all over the country, so it's a really big effort to get from Cork and Tipperary and all these places. You know, it's, it's not that easy it's for a them. Big to dedication, get there. yeah. It takes a lot of time to get there to play soccer for uh, an hour and a half. So, again, for me to give up my time is easy. Uh, I suppose just a bit why I got involved in, I suppose, on my own story. Uh, uh, my partner, Martina, donated a kidney to my nephew. So right. that kind of put me on the pathway of more than happy to get involved in, you know, because uh, I, I see 
the struggles first hand of, of yeah. lads that go through uh, the transplant and you know it's not always easy and it's a tough road and you know some days they're not feeling great and you know to come and play soccer and then they're in hospital the next day and the efforts they make and the families and support and you know it's great like so I'm delighted to be involved with the lads but uh, again like uh uh, John said, you know, it's onward and upward now, so we're making new steps all the time. Great game today. Uh, three all thank the English lads for coming over to place. But again, two weeks' time in Turner's Cross, 11 v 11, starting to get used to bigger formats, harder training sessions now, more time dedicated to sessions and, you know, tactical stuff now is coming into it, whereas 7 v 7 is a little more off the cuff kind of at times, even though we have plans, but doesn't always go to plan. So yeah. plan B, whereas in, in 11 aside, as you know, uh, it takes a lot more planning so yeah a lot more hard work for us on and off the pitch so the dedication now we talk about on, on the podcast it's about like lads giving up the, the weekends and lads obviously missing christenings and stuff like that but the dedication that your lads are showing there is that putting their health at, more or less at risk for the game of football and that's again the love of the sport that that, that, that boys are putting through you know yeah, look, at that comes across. And again, <clears throat> like John said, look, at it's, uh, they didn't really want the lads playing because of its contact sport. But again, at the end of the day, we're no different than anyone else. So the lads are no different than anyone else. They enjoy playing football. They watch it on telly. Their family's given great support. You know, without their wives and partners and, and mothers and fathers Definitely, and so on, yeah. it wouldn't be possible at times because, you know, they give a lot of help. And, you know, some lads can't drive and they have to get lifts and so much organisation and dedication to get to it. But number two, at the same time, uh, you know it takes a big effort family wise you know it's a big family day we try to make the family uh, involved as much as we can if we can get them to training sessions and here today you can see, see now what walked in there on this, this, the families the parents the, yeah. the grandparents and From the kids parents, and kids yeah. you know Good they're support. all in there having food now and soup and sandwiches and it's a great facility like I said they really looked after us well here today in the AUL so like you know and you can see it it is family has to be family orientated or else lads couldn't do this as yeah. well because some of them are working jobs you know and then like I said hospitals and different things and it's just so hard to get to trainings you know even what was your scouting uh, obviously in a normal you go and watch a team see a player I'll ask him to come play with us there you just have a couple of restrictions there because there's um, lads they don't know yeah. who's transplant who's not transplant yeah so, so look at John John will probably be more uh, knowledgeable than myself in that to be honest but I, again like I suppose they have probably a list of people that have transfers I let maybe John might build, build on it a bit more yeah listen we, we, we pretty much have an open door policy uh, did they get in contact with you or yeah we're a fully be? fully inclusive so you know it does age doesn't come into it um, ability doesn't really come into it either um, obviously it does on Matt's side but initially to get someone involved you know there's no certain criteria obviously other than you have to be um, a recipient of a solid o organ uh, transplantation right. um, and that covers uh, a heart transplant lung transplants kidney transplant liver transplant um, pancreas and also uh, bone marrow right um, and basically what the, the first point of contact is normally the person would get uh, involved through contacting the IKEA which is the governing body and um, the IKEA then will put them on to either myself or one of the committee members now we also have a website and we have social media so uh, they don't necessarily have to go through the IKEA either um, they can contact one of us through social media um, or send us an email I, I just had a guy there who came and watched the game today um, and um, he's fairly interested in getting involved um, and he he contacted me through the email on our website. Yeah. So as I say, it's an open door policy. Anyone out there who's had a um, a solid organ transplantation, um, you know, um, is more than welcome to get involved. You get in touch. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. 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 Now going forward, you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll be having a competitive team, and then also we're going to have a development squad. So there's there's something there for every ability. Um, you don't have to be a Messi or a Ronaldo. You know. Um, if you, if you feel you want to play football at a social level, there's there's a there's an outlet there for you as well. Yeah, very good, brilliant. Um, so we're going through the rules. That you're saying it's seventy seven going eleven eleven contact and all. So is it full contact now or and um, is it ninety minutes? What's what's the? No, well, it's 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 actually done as a non contact uh, sport. Uh, then there's when the lads can send yeah, off today for <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's um, easier said than done. I, I know that myself actually. Um, but yeah, it's down as non-contact. Um, you know, there's no slide tackling. There's no heavy shoulders um, because because we're transplanted um, with the medication that we're on. 
um, there's a there's a, a higher risk of us uh, developing osteoporosis, brittle right. bones. Um, so we just have to be very careful with legs and arms, and in case we break a bone or whatever. Very good. Um, so that's where the non-contact comes in. Now it's very easy saying that, but when the referee blows his whistle and you cross the white line, it's another thing it's trying. Like to, yeah, it's like you're yeah. in training. You tell lads take it yeah. easy. Find out just two But it's it's, going it's the only way that the sport was allowed to go ahead in competition level was it had to be seen as a non-contact sport. See, funding wise now, you're you're going over to Italy for the for the World Cup. Is it self funded or is there anything from the FEI that is a pushing or is is a different organisation? We approached the FEI um, probably about eighteen months ago um, when we were kind of originally setting up. Um, we tried to get under the, the umbrella of football for all. It's a uh, we do that now. We, we do that in things and it was absolutely yeah, and it's a pro- it's a program days, for yeah. for all abilities. Um, you know, to cover the likes of the the Irish amputee, the Irish deaf uh, team, and um, the homeless team, and uh, we applied to to see could we go under that umbrella as the in the program football for all. And unfortunately, for whatever reasons, we were unsuccessful. Um, now the door wasn't closed fully on us. You know, they were just, we were just told at the time that basically there was no room for another team at at, at that time. Um, but it's something that we we are going to look at before we go to the World Cup to see can we kind of get in there. Yeah, very um, good. because you know one thing is we all want to represent the, the main the main thing that we want to represent is our donors. Yeah. you know, because without our donors we wouldn't be here today. Um, yeah. Personally, I wouldn't be, you know, and all the other lads, um, you know, so we want to represent our donors when we go to these tournaments. Um, it's the number one thing that's at the back of all of our minds. Um, the first person we think of uh, when, you know, when we when we cross that white line is I wouldn't be here only for my donor. Yeah, um, I wouldn't guys, be, yeah. I wouldn't be playing football. I probably wouldn't be alive. Yeah, you know, and that's just the, you know, the bones of it. Um, so our donors are our number one that we want to represent and then we want to represent our families. Um, and like anyone, when I when I was growing up as a little boy, my my dream was to play for Ireland. Yeah. You know, like every young fella growing up in Ireland, you want to play for your country. Um, I had to give up soccer when I was 18 but with, uh, with the heart condition that I had and um, I thought my days of playing football were gone and then all of a sudden I got a transplant, heart transplant and six months later I'm back in the football pitch. Six months? Yeah, after a heart transplant, you the know. Lads, the lads I know they got a knock on their knee then they're out for being knee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I remember the first day we, we, we uh, I, I ran out in Alsa, it was a January back in tr- two or three years ago and I, I laced up my boots and I hadn't put my boots on in about 20 years. I, well, I was 18 and I was actually 38 so it was exactly 20 years from when I put on my boots. I cried like a baby going on yeah. the field like, you know, I just I thought that those days were gone and you know because of my donor I'm here and I'm representing my donor I'm representing my country so to go back to your, your question about the FEI we do want to be you know seen as representing our country um, you know especially when we go to competitions we would like to we'd like to you know see some kind of appreciation yeah, from, our, from the FEI our governing body and for, yeah. um, you know we want to try to get caps for competitions and stuff like that yeah. why, why should I'm not trying to pick the bones of it here. It's probably not the time or place, but you know, if certain teams can get caps when they go to competition, why can't we? We're, we're transplant po- sport as well, you know. Um, there's two lads here with Derek and Kieran there, yeah. So Derek, you you recently transplanted? Yeah. For six six months was it? Uh, well, no, I had it on New Year's Day. New this Year's Day. Year. Yeah. So yeah, so not even a year gone. Yeah. You were speaking before, and I asked you, was it was it genetic or was it? Through the family, yeah. or so we don't talk us through it. Yeah, they're not exactly sure how where it comes from, but it, it's definitely related to any kind of bowel diseases. So I have ulcerative colitis. I was diagnosed with that in 2008. Uh, I was 17 at the time. It was kind of kind of quite hard. I was playing at a decent level, so kind of health and energy and weight kind of went down a good bit. But then in 2013, I was diagnosed with this liver condition that ultimately led to the to the transplant, and it's 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 called primary sclerosing cholangitis. So it's a liver disease that affects the bile ducts. And what it does is it causes the bile ducts to gradually narrow and close over, the, over a, year, a period of years um, and eventually cause your liver to fail because the bile backs up. So mine failed there um, at the end of last year. Like I was just like couldn't eat without being extremely in extreme pain. And um, yeah, it was constant infections. And, but, but it's funny, I still, I ha- if I had one good day, I'd think, geez, do we, do we actually really need a transplant? Yeah, you, you, in your mind, you would, because you're saying, oh, I don't, I don't want. Well, not you don't want it, but, but you're trying to convince yourself that you don't need. Well, it. If you have kids and people relying on you, you, mm. you, you just want to make sure. Like, yeah. this, is, this is in my own head, and I wanted to make sure that I really needed it before I got it. So yeah. you have one good day, you're like, do I actually need it? 
so it's actually, selfless from you, you know, like that you're thinking about other people for yeah, yourself yeah. though, you know. But that's it, like and I went on the I went on the transplant list the year after my wedding there, uh, last year. In June last year, and in July I I paused myself for that reason because I just wanted to have the summer with me with my two year old daughter and I wanted you know yeah. I just wasn't sure I needed it but I got re- in in December then it went really downhill and yeah thankfully I, I was called yeah, in yeah. New Year's yeah. Eve and yeah and now you're back obviously New Year's Eve new start fresh fresh year the next day new living I'll never, I'll never forget that yeah we were watching the fireworks from uh, Vincent's window there myself and the wife oh, it, was, it was a crazy experience you probably thought your football days were over as you said you, you played for the guy a lot when you're younger and you're active all the way through. Like so, looks like Kieran. Kieran was born when he's younger. You had the liver transplant yourself in your later years. You had to had to get the transplant. So, yeah. how how was how was the mentality coming back to football from that? Yeah, it's tough. To we don't to get back. Obviously, I was at the time. It's a funny story how we got back in, back into it. But yeah, I was playing in Parma's Town United when we were, when I was younger, and we actually had a great a great team for for the club. I was also playing with Dublin, so it was like under twelve, like just Very in development team. squads. And the time came to make a decision. Like I chose, I chose to go. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't play soccer then since I was under sixteen. But I went back then eventually. Um, would you know John Wilkes? Yeah, John big Wilkes John. would be a big name. The he's, he's yeah, Cherry Orchard. Cherry Orchard. Yeah, yeah, big John. Yeah, he was a taxi driver. Yeah, I was in his car one night somehow, and I like, in his taxi one night, and I was talking away to him, and you realise we, we used to play against each other's teams back back in the day. Yeah, he, he said he was manager of Conf, and I was like, he's might come down. And he was like, all right, see you Tuesday. So I'd say, yeah, no, I didn't think it was coming out at all. But <laughs> I showed up on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up on Tuesday. Who's this fella? Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the thing. So he was this lad burned the year off me in my taxi. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I spent three good years with Confi, Leinster Senior, Sunday side. Uh, it was about 10 years ago now. It was just as I was diagnosed with liver condition. <coughs> as I said, it's, it, it's progressive. It's gradual. So I wasn't that bad at the time. So uh, did, you, did you know, you're, were you getting tested for this before? It was just that you weren't well and you, you kind of, you just got yeah. into the doctor? Or? Like I was getting... F- because I had ulcerative colitis, I was getting kind of blood tests just to make sure everything. You knew was you okay. had this. Yeah, you knew I had this disease. Or I knew I had the ulcerative colitis since really? 2008. Um, I didn't know I had this till 2013, but I was getting regular tests with the colitis, and kind of my liver levels were up. And they, they did a good few checks. It took a while to actually realise exactly what it was. Different scans and stuff. So, what was it like that the the neighbours coming back to play football? Were you kind of a bit cautious? I'm sure your, your family were telling you to take it handy. Or I was yeah. Well, I was probably I was probably eager to get out. Like I because yeah. I. I saw them, they competed in the tournament, I think, in February over in Birmingham. And they, like, for me, coming through a transplant, going through a recovery play, stage, like two months isn't, isn't anything. And I saw them doing so well. I was like, they had transplants as well. I can get, eventually get back into this. Yeah. And it was in April where I, I, I got played me for a session. And it was just amazing to get back out there. It was probably a bit early, but I felt good. And thankfully, everything has been going well since then. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Play, yeah. So we're going to Kieran on there. Um, I said earlier on, you, you were born with, well, could talk us through, you are born with um, a liver, liver disease, was it? Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce what it was called, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was born with, I needed a transplant, I got transplanted in Birmingham in 1992. There's, there's a lot of it in the papers about what looks, me, if knows me and Kieran are cousins, so that's the reason he's, he's sitting across me. <laughs> <laughs> I could have got someone else in there. That's the reason I got picked. Um, um, yeah. Remember, remember, it was all over the papers over here, wasn't it? That, yeah, it was in the, I remember the, there was a street party and stuff like that, RT. Is that because you were going, is it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <That's what laughs> um, yeah, look, I remember, obviously, very little. I remember little bits, like, being in, I remember going over. I remember when my dad was watching the snooker and Jimmy White was playing. And <laughs> he was about to pot the black and the phone rang and he went bananas. And he said, we have a liver, you just have to come over, whatever. So, and I heard the transplant team were at the winning the silver over in Birmingham. I was sitting there and I was like, what? I never knew it was. So I have to get in touch with these lads. So I went, found them on Facebook, put up a message. And I came down there. I just loved playing football. Now I would never play that like the level of Darrow, but I've always played football. Like. And um, like the football is one thing, but it's the like the lads that you're with and like the stories that you're hearing. Like you listen to Darrow's stories, John's, everyone's. And it's just like, John, I give a, a speech in the change room just actually when you were ringing. And it was like, you, know, it's, you won't find another group of lads like the group of lads that we have like football for me with these lads is it's secondary you know the connection you have like I wouldn't really know John or Dara or anyone that well but you feel like you've known them yeah he's just sharing the same story yeah, he's like, all you know, transplants it, yeah. it is it's, it's, you, you wouldn't find it anywhere else, like. look at the second little family yeah that's yeah. exactly yeah. what it is it's yeah, brilliant yeah, yeah, yeah. he's all support each other he's got to kind of keep an eye out for each other as well they, yeah, yeah. yeah but you do and like 
John's are there and there's lads who are still going through their, their journey going through different stages of recovery or starting different parts and you know we've on our whatsapp group like you know lads if there's something up with someone they put up and straight away there's the support is there for everyone like no one's afraid to say how they're feeling or whatever it's just like i said it's just a different you, you won't find another group lads, like yeah very good so you're 30 Seven now, six. Yeah, Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Uh, Catching up on it. But um, so you, your your liver was only supposed to last uh, many years. Five. Five years was it? Yeah. And you, you haven't any no complications at the moment. No, well, in and out of hospital is like the same as other boys in for your checkups. Check uh, yeah, no, nothing. Thank you. Touch yeah, the pal, but yeah. and that's that's the thing. Like you know, I I know, you know, I'm. So I say we went to Coventry there during the when did we go to Coventry? July was it? We went yeah, over yeah. and me mum and dad came over like and I was seeing sort of what they went through when I was smaller, when you were with the, the other lads, like you know, listening to other lads' stories and that. And uh, it, it's a it's a big eye opener because for me, I never had a transplant. Because you were so young. I grew yeah. up with it, like, you know. It's, it's, that's a different stage. It's, you were a kid, you can't yeah, remember yeah, it. It's, yeah. If you kind of forget it back to mind, but looks at that day, he, it is as fresh as it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's, for me, it's great to see Kieran. His, his liver has lasted over 30 years now. Yeah. Right? Is it over 30 years? Yeah, yeah. And, two, I, two and, and my liver isn't even a year now. And to see how, how much you can get out of a liver is yeah. really great yeah, for yeah. me to see. Yeah. Like. Um, so, we go back to Matt now. Um, what's the plans for going forward? <clears throat> yeah, so the plans going forward, I suppose, we're up on a regime. We'll, we'll probably have a we'll have another session or two before the Christmas, but obviously we have a game in two weeks down in Turner's Cross, but we will take a little break over the Christmas, but we'll come back fully charged in the new year. And and again, now that's where the lads are going to, and myself, we'll step it up to, you know, it's 11 v 11 football now, and with that then comes different, you know, because we're not going... More, bigger we're cardio. Going to take part in all these, but again, we have aspiration like anyone, you know, whether it's in a League of Ireland club, a junior club, you know, uh, Leinster Senior, whatever, the boys just want to play football, at, you know, and this is their level, and this is what they're there to do for their country, like I said, uh, hopefully we'll get talks going, like I said, with the FAI again, and uh, coming under that umbrella, which would be fantastic for us, and, and for the FAI, I think to have lads like all these guys, you know, why they wouldn't want them in their organisation you know it'd be crazy like but again I'm sure we get those conversations going at some stage so uh, like the, the future is bright but again then we're looking at Italy you know World Cup going out there for you know probably 10 days I would imagine or we do, we do a live podcast from over there we follow you over <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we bring you out with us yeah <laughs> But uh, yeah, look at and, and again, look at we have different lads, and look at training is not easy. Like I said, they're traveling from all over the country. You know, it's not just coming down the Kieran road. Kieran was saying that we have from Cork and yeah, from yeah. Cork and Tipperary and, and, and uh, you know Dundalk and all these places. Like so, lots of different parts of the country. It's not easy, but again, they have great support networks with their with their wives and family and uh, stuff which you need. And you know, and we try to make it inclusive for them that even if they want to come to trainings, we train in the watershed in Kilkenny. There, uh, it's a lovely facility. They have swimming pools and uh, gymnasium hall and stuff that. They can use so that you know anyone comes with kids can use that so we're trying Very to make good. it inclusive for everyone it's not just for all about the boys that some yes we like playing soccer yes we like getting away but again it's, it has to be family orientated to make it work as well as i said there on the, the lads kind of share the same story and that's the living going through the same story the families would have that as well they're sharing the same story because there's the support they're putting through so it, it's the big group that we've seen and they're sure they're going to have a little bond and a connection through through football so it's not only the players are going to have it the, the family will have it as well yeah. it'll be even a bigger family for years yeah. old yeah. you know it's always making new friends meeting new people every time we go for a tournament or, you know like you're yeah, like meeting new people and people just click straight away and it's the same in Coventry it's my first time away with the lads my first tournament with them meeting all their families and friends and other people from Transplant Ireland from the team you know we had lads over there that were playing darts bowling running cycling all other uh, sports as well it's not just about soccer yes yes, we're in it for soccer but the lads play other sports as well and they do other exactly, things yeah. the Transplant team so it's not all about the soccer like some of them play darts and bowling and swimming and running we have all these other things that lads took part in in Coventry we had lads that were in athletics they were done cycling they done bowling we had a game of darts one night all of us you know the Transplant team was a bit of fun as well so yeah. uh, like I said it's a real bond and real family thing but uh, yeah look at we have to get like the, the big thing for me again I meet all their families and I'm really appreciative I see my own nephew like the life he's having now since he got his transplant from Martina and um, like I said he works with the ESB now he's in an apprenticeship he's, he's two and a half Brilliant. years into an apprenticeship Brilliant. where he couldn't have done that without this you know he would have been yeah. really really poorly like so um, so that's that's uh, you know that's why again the game in Turner's Cross is really important. We're getting people in. We're bringing awareness to it. You know, hopefully they'll see and maybe you know people will. What, what date is that? 
Uh, that's on the 25th yeah Swindon Nova yeah so Saturday, venues around there yeah, kick it down, so yeah Saturday the 25th down in Turner's Cross like I said it'll be a great day it'll be a family occasion <coughs> as well uh, hopefully we'll have some local clubs linked in with us for uh, ball boys and stuff like this as well so on the night there'll be a few different things going on but yeah we're really looking forward to that one as well you know and it's our first 11 v 11 so that's, that'll be really very good yeah. as well. um, just thinking there there's a lot of lads that would give up football uh, like that that's just said oh, no, oh, I'm sick of this and I'm giving up about 21, 22 there's lads like ourselves that like had that operation probably don't get back playing f- f- football you probably thought I won't play football again that's going through your head because even though we said I don't need game football but to, to look to myself and probably look at ourselves as well that's it's a part of your life and then you some said you go listen you're not having that anymore you can't do it because because you're, you're you're sick or whatever there's a people are giving up football way too easy when they like, when they can easily play at a later age. I'm 28 now, and I still won't give up. I still I'll put myself on for the last 10 minutes here and there because for the love of the game, like so. So for you lads, there that even think that it's going to be taken away from us, like yeah, yeah and, and we thought it was being taken away from us, and now possibly you're going to a World Cup. There you go. Like, there you go. That's representing your country. Unbelievable. Like, that's yeah. fucking brilliant. So, John, we give you the last word in this. Yeah, um, I, I suppose. Uh, we, uh, just um, one thing I want to do is before is just to uh, thank our, our sponsors. Um, our main sponsors is Sonus Batrams, um, who have put a lot behind us both financially and um, just supporting us as well. Um, they came on board after our first tournament uh, in Birmingham. Um, the CEO contacted us and just just wanted to do whatever he could for for us. You know, he he, he just was blown away by the, you know that those guys running around a football pitch that you know could have died like you know yeah. um and had transplants and that and um he just wanted to get involved um so yes yeah, son is bathrooms um is our main sponsor and then the alice is clothing um a guy um who actually got a kidney transplant himself and set up his own clothing wear for patients on on the alice's you know to easy access uh to, to, the, to the lines and that in their arms and um he wanted to get on board as well, and uh, he sponsored us a bit of gear and stuff like that. And then uh, Fine Living, it's a timber frame company in the dog. They got on board as well and sponsored us our Very training nice. gear and stuff. Because everything we do is at the minute is self-funded. Uh, yeah. We don't get any funding off any uh, organisation. Um, you know, guys coming to training every every two weeks from all different parts of the country, as Matt says, um, that's an expense on them. Um, you know, so. Um, you know everything we put in is, is comes out of our own pocket plus the, the 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 money from our sponsors. So I suppose if there's there's any big companies out there listening in, yeah, you know, and um, we've we've a, a massive World Cup now in less than nine months. So um, you know, if there's any company that would like to think that we could uh, connect in in some way, absolutely, we would love to get involved with other companies to help us out. Uh, just to help our, you know, it's a it's a it's a dream to represent your country and. I suppose in the times we're living in, you know, um, you know the cost of living and everything else, you know, a lot of us aren't working, so money's tight already. Um, and um, you know, when you have that expense on you, you know, it's uh, it's it's the sponsors um, that just take that bit of pressure off, as you know. And I have to say, Sunnis have been great with us so far. So um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of get that thank you into yeah, our sponsors. Play, yeah. yeah, I suppose one one last message we kind of want to leave uh, with today is. Uh, is the message of organ donation. Um, you know, we wouldn't be here today without our organ donors. We wouldn't be playing football. Um, we wouldn't be living our lives. I've, I've got five extra years that I thought I wasn't going to get. Um, and that's just down to, you know, a person I never met um, and decided to become an organ donor. And um, because of that selfless act, I'm, I'm here today talking to you. So I suppose the message that we're trying to get out there is, you know, have that conversation with your loved ones. Um, I know it's not a, an easy conversation to have, um, but you know the more organ donors we have in this country, um, the more lives are going to be saved, the more families are going to be able to move on, um, and there'll be more people like us being able to get out and kick a football. You know, um, and as I say, it's more than kicking a football; it's it's getting that second chance of life. Um, so yeah, listen, if you're a healthy person and you're able to donate, have have a think about it. Talk to your loved ones. Um, become an organ donor. Is there a website you're on that? The, the yeah, you can do it through the IKEA. Um, if you go onto the Irish Kidney Association website, uh, there's a link there, and um, you can also, if you're renewing your uh, license, you can actually take a box and it's put onto your full license. Um, but in fairness, I think by the end of the year, it should have gone through the Oireachtas. Um, it uh, the new opt-out bill will be hopefully in by the early next year, which means 
going forward, everyone will be an organ donor. Brilliant. That'll be just the, the norm then. Um, so you'll actually have to opt out if you don't want to donate. So uh, when that eventually does come in, um, you know, it's going to it's gonna give so many more people the chance of a second life and be able to move on in that, you know. But for now, um, if you're not an organ donor, maybe just have a think about it and uh, please become one. <laughs>